Hello everyone, back to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the JMA free monthly season model forecast for today's first video. Uh, it's going to take us through February, March and April. So we go through the rest of winter and into the middle of the spring uh, with this um, update. This is ahead of the Sunday's uh, first uh, spring 2019 Season one roundup uh, will be released about first thing on Sunday morning. Got very, very late uh, for the um, spring updates this year. We haven't done anything really for spring at all. Well, I don't really about it. We haven't done any updates for spring at all. That's primarily due to the shutdown in America. We haven't been able to bring you the analogs that we would normally do. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to be able to do a spring forecast at all. It'll be the first time ever that we've had to miss out a season at uh, Gas Service. But time is just ticking on. There's no sign of a shutdown ending and the analogs uh, part of NOAA getting back up and running. So it is uh, proved to be very, very disruptive. Uh, but we can bring the seasonal models. All the uh, seasonal models are still online. So we're going to do the first spring 2019 uh, seasonal model roundup on uh, Sunday. And uh, so we're going to try our best to bring you a spring forecast to get through to the end of February. But it really is a struggle. We may not be able to do it. But isolating out of the season on a roundup for the um, spring of 2019 uh, is the JMA. So we always like to take the JMA out of the uh, season one roundups, have a look at it on its own. So this will include part of the spring 2019 Seasonal model roundup, undoubtedly, but there's so much information you can get from the JMA, but we won't have time to touch on within the season model roundup because we're going to have something like uh, 10, 11, 12 long range models to get through. So, um, I'd like to take this one out, have a look at it in its own terms. That's what we do for today's first video. Just say that coming up later on this afternoon, we're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days, all of the usual stuff will be included in that as well. So, we're going to start off with the 500 mil of our height anomaly flow chart from the JMA season model for February uh, 2019. We're looking at the North Pole view down. So, that's the North Pole of the Northern Latitudes, just then uh, mid latitudes. That's the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere. I should say just there. <laughs> the mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are around here. And the British Isles is uh, just there. So res extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure blue, is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. The JMA is placing a large blocking area of high pressure over the top of Greenland and extending it back into the North Pole during uh, February. That is a very extensive and very strong northern blocking feature indeed. And then underneath it, it's got below average heights as a trough of low pressure into eastern parts of America. That comes out into the Atlantic and comes across the Atlantic into Western Europe like that. The jet stream seems to be on a southerly track. It, uh, let's get rid of those L's. The jet stream is on a southerly track and seems to be going uh, through there. And it looks like we're on the cold side of the jet. So it's expect to be pulling in cold air into this trough of below average heights. Cold air from both the uh, east and possibly even from the north as well. Got a very, very strong blocking signal, as I say, over Greenland. So the block is forcing cold air out of the pole down into mid latitudes as cold air plunging into northern and eastern parts of America but I think we'd also have cold air plunging into uh, many parts of Europe as well so a cold and wintry looking uh, 500 millibar height anomaly for February then we go through into March and to be honest it looks like it could be uh, quite a cold March as well so we have below average heights centered over and to the northeast of the uh, UK above average heights are still there up over Greenland they're extending down into eastern parts of Canada uh, as well the only difference with March is that we do raise the heights a bit down across Spain and sort of uh, the Mediterranean so that's trying to bring up a southwesterly flow however I think between the high pressure sitting to the northwest and the low pressure to the northeast we're probably still entrenching down 
pretty cold air in March as well. So they could be a pair of cold months, February and March, in line, of course, with what happened last year. We had a pair of cold months for February and March 2018. We could have similar developments here for uh, Mar February and March 2019. And um, then we go through to April, and this is how things are looking in April. It's month three, so it's a very long way out. By this point, the blocking looks like it's centred across eastern parts of Canada, but it does extend back towards Greenland to some degree. Below average heights kind of like centred across central parts of Europe, but there's not a lot going on. Looks like the heights are rising in the middle of the Atlantic. So, again, we're trying to uh, re-establish a southwest wind. And I think by April, possibly, we would be seeing signs of a little bit more of a successful sort of uh, return of the west southwest So, possibly a bit milder and uh, possibly a little bit more Atlantic-driven in, uh, in April. But that's a very long way off, and uh, it's month three. The signal's there are quite weak. Let's have a look at the mid-latitude view uh, coming back to February. So the British Isles on this view is just here in the top right hand of the chart. As you're looking at it, there's uh, North America and Canada there. The Atlantic is here, of course. The Pacific Ocean uh, is over there. Then we've got uh, Asia, Japan, China, into Russia just there, into Western Russia just there, and then into Europe and Western Europe uh, over there. This is the equator of the uh, uh, just here so of course this is all the northern hemisphere just there southern hemisphere is down here the south pole is off the chart you can't see the poles on this particular view south pole is uh, down there and the North Pole, the view we're just looking at, of course, the North Pole, including Greenland, is off the chart uh, up here. Uh, right, so that's your geography lesson. Let's get back to the update and a reminder of the uh, month one, 500 millibar high tonomy. So we have this really strong blocking signal up around Greenland, means the Arctic. You can just see the edges of that with these red colours at the very top of the chart. They extend back up to here, of course, with very extensive northern blocking. Underneath it, we've got this trough of below average heights that's coming out of eastern America and into the Atlantic rather like that. It looks like we would probably, because there's so much northern blocking, be entrenching cold air into that trough of below average height. So I think potentially a cold and wintry month. Temperature anomalies are not overly cold. It hints at an average to the northern parts of the country, slightly colder than average. But it's very hard to make these out. But there is some blue up towards Scotland. And over here, there's a little bit of blue as well. However, given the blocking signal, I would have expected, and do see it's cold and average for Eastern America, given the blocking signal, I would have expected that this would be a colder uh, month than that showing. So I would assume, or I would think, shave a degree or two off that temperature anomaly, and you'll be much closer to the reality with such a strong blocking signal centre right over top of Greenland. I think uh, a, a cold and average month would be favoured. Precipitation on are a little bit above average, particularly so down to our south. So you see where the jet stream's going. Again, let's get rid of all that. You see where the jet stream is going. The jet stream's going to be here where it's wettest, passing to the south of the country. Nevertheless, the UK looks quite unsettled. And with such a strong blocking signal, I think quite a bit of that could be snow. So assume that we have um, above average precipitation in February, but also potentially quite snowy as well. So above average snow is not out of the question during February. The wind arrows are interesting. They're always very hard to make out these black arrows, especially when the colours are so intense. But I can tell you that uh, we've got the southwesterlies passing to the south of us. The west southwesterlies are going through there. And uh, we're sort of bringing in kind of like east northeasterlies uh, into the UK. So uh, we've almost got um, a cross sort of zonal flow rather than a typical west to east zonal flow. We've almost got an east to west zonal flow due to the very extreme blocking that's up across green certainly in the north atlantic we're almost got a reverse uh, zonal flow it's quite an extreme anomaly that is going for in terms of that blocking around greenland and you'll expect a very very interesting month indeed in uh february that's march so again 
just raising the heights a little bit to our south in March. We're raising the heights around Spain and into the Mediterranean. We've got a trough of below average heights sitting kind of like to our east and northeast. And the blocking is still there. It's a little bit weak and it's more centred towards eastern parts of Canada in uh, March as well. Temperature anomalies in March are forecast to be a little bit milder than average, a milder than average month coming up to start the spring. Precipitation anomalies are a little bit above average as well, so uh, quite mild but quite unsettled. Let's see where the all-important wind direction is being forecast to come from. So we've still got these east northeasterlies um, indicated by these black arrows just here, but they're a little bit more to the north of the country, a little bit more to the north of, uh, of the UK in the North Atlantic. And you see this, uh, the west southwest is a slightly closer to us, particularly in the south, and that's because heights are rising. Uh, across Spain and uh, presumably back into the Azores. Um, so the Westleys are having a go at re-establishing. It's probably a slow old process. And there would be some wind sheet potential in March as well, I think, due to, again, quite a, quite a strong blocking signal. So I think March may be a bit transitional, actually. Perhaps it starts off uh, cold and wintry, but it gradually starts uh, re-establishing, gradually start re-establishing the uh, more typical westerly zonal flow, perhaps as the month goes along. And then we get through into uh, April, and this is how April is looking. So again, we've got the above average heights rising uh, around the Azores, and we do extending towards Spain and Portugal as well. The blocking by this point is becoming more focused across eastern parts of Canada. So the UK heights are uh, very close to average. There is a trough of below average heights centred across some parts of Central Europe. Another relatively mild month being forecast by the JMA in April, so no problems from a temperature perspective. Precipitation on I mean, still look rather unsettled, to be honest. This is quite an unsettled three-monthly period coming up, if this is right. And uh, the black arrows indicating the uh, wind direction, all important, show that we're re-establishing the westerlies really again they're a job to make out those black arrows but i think we can just about see that westies are coming back into the uk during the course of uh during the course of april we do have these east northeast east is still plunging down into eastern parts of america out of the Arctic, so that will possibly uh, still keep quite cold conditions going across sort of east of the states, eastern parts of Canada. Maybe starting to turn these waters around the eastern seaboard of America, possibly starting to turn those a little bit colder, perhaps, uh, which would be interesting as we move on towards May, but I won't say any more about that. Um, but essentially what we have uh, for the UK is that Westerlies are re-established. So after that very abnormal pattern that we have in February, very extreme northern blocking with almost a reverse zonal flow going from east to west as opposed to the typical zonal flow, which is west to east. Uh, we go through March and gradually that blocking unravels, it weakens a bit and we get through to April and finally that's when the uh, westerlies are re-establishing, probably bringing a return to more average conditions, typical spring conditions with uh, showers, of course in April, April showers and uh, relatively mild temperatures as well. So I think the focus for this update is really on February. February has a very extreme level of northern blocking and whilst the JMA its temperature anomaly wasn't going for anything particularly cold for us. Uh, with such an extreme level of northern blocking centred around Greenland, I think you have to uh, be uh, thinking that uh, February could be really quite a wintry month indeed. And unsettled as well. So there is a potential in February for uh, snow, quite a bit of snow potentially, I would have thought, with such an extreme level of northern blocking. Ouch, that hurt. <laughs> So, that's it for your uh, free monthly JMA seasonal update. Uh, I don't know if you heard that back. I sort of put, put my hand down and uh, caught the side of the table. So, um, that was a bit painful. Sorry about that. Um, let's get back on track. Uh, so, the um, JMA free monthly uh, update. All the focus really is on February. Very extreme level of blocking in February. Cold and wintry month. Can't be ruled out. Possibly very cold and wintry, although there was no sign of that in the JMA's temperature anomaly. March 
March and April gradually sees a slow return as to a more typical pattern as the blocking becomes more centred across eastern Canada. We slowly reintroduce those uh, westerlies back in from off the Atlantic. Right, so that's it for update number one today. We'll be back later on this afternoon with your week to 10 day video updates. So come back for that then. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.